I just can't seem to shift this cold, like, properly. Like, and I thought I was really good. Like, I took, I genuinely took, like, days off. Do you know what I mean? Like, how many days did I take off? Like, three or four? It's just so shit. Because I just want to get, I just want to get back into training. Like, I want to feel, like, a decent level of base fitness before I start training for a marathon again. Because I just want to, like, I want to hit it. All right, well, have fun on the muddy fields today. Say good luck to Izzy. All right, speak to you later. Bye. It is quarter to 11 on Saturday. I should be doing my session right now. I had a really nice fartlek planned for today. Five times, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. But we're not doing that because... Clearly, I'm not better. Just got off the phone to my coach, and luckily, she asked me how I was feeling this morning, Um, because I would probably have just blindly got out there and done the session. I'm going to try an easy run today and just run for the length of time that I feel able to. But it is not all doom and gloom. I'm going to take you with me on my easy run throughout today for a bit of a day in the life on this strange Saturday. And then later on, I'm going to talk you through some really quite exciting and scary goals that I have set myself for the next few months and you might think that's a bit strange because this is not really the typical time to do that and to put yourself out there with some goals that are really quite stretching at a time that I am literally in bed, probably unable to run for more than 20 minutes today and... Uh, don't have much confidence that I'm going to achieve those goals but I think that's really important I am fully prepared to put myself out there and talk about these terrifying goals and use this to put a marker in the sand that I can look back on when I'm really getting into the training towards those goals yeah look I'll get into that later on it's exciting and I am excited to take you guys on that journey with me but first let's go run Why do they put like an entire autobiography worth of labels in sports clothes? Excuse me, we didn't. Stop following me. <laughs> Just leave me alone, okay? I'm just trying to live my life here. Ready? Yeah. Another grind. Bye. What a beautiful morning for an easy run. So how about this? What do you guys think about when you're running? What is going through your head? Like, what do you think about? Because I feel like I have a non-stop internal monologue and some days it might be really negative and it's like okay one mile down seven to go or when can I turn around or I don't know focusing on that side of things or negative in the sense that it's focusing on I don't know things that are stressing me out and just constantly thinking through things and sometimes it can be super positive and I'm just I don't know, when I'm in a really good mood, I think on a run, my mind almost drifts to this place where like, I'm really present, but also not thinking about anything. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like, I get into this zone where I'm just like, the only word that I can use to describe it is like flowing. And it's like the best feeling ever, especially when you're doing something that's hard or you're in the session and you're just in the zone. Uh, but it can happen on runs as well, and I just, I just love it. So yeah, I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about on the run as well, and if it's different to what you think about when you're doing anything else, and it gives you like just this insane headspace, or maybe not, maybe you just zone out. All right, back from the run, and just thought I'd show you this new feature. In the dining room. It's uh, kind of the new minimalism. What do you think? Pretty neat. <laughs> uh, no, we are packing boxes at the moment because we are moving. And I'll be able to tell you more about that 
very soon. But first, I need to get some post-run munch in, so I'm gonna whip up some eggs and have a very stereotypical runner's lunch. And yeah, I need to get some food in my stomach because I'm starving. time you did some cooking around here, frankly. <laughs> just for everyone watching, just for reference. Nothing! Nothing! I, I cook everything in I have a knife in, in my hand. She's just doing it for the views. Right, we get into the crunch point. It's where you gotta bring everything together all at once. So I brought my sous chef in here, um, Daniela, who is gonna be Spreading the butter on the toast is a really kind of easy, menial task, so you can't give her too much because she gets so well. Hey. Right here. What's your rating? 11 out of 10. Of course it would Probably be. Probably about 100% better than your eggs. A few moments later. Just done a bit of coaching work. Had a bit of a lazy day so far, to be honest. Had a late shower after getting back from the run. We're all entitled to a lazy day every now and again. And I'm gonna focus on a little bit of self-care for the rest of the day. So I'm gonna do some yoga. Yoga with Adrienne, which I never do. I never do yoga. And I really wish I did because I feel like it'd be really good for my hips, my lower back, and just my mental health. So I'm gonna put Adrian on the big screen, limber up, chill out, maybe pack a couple more boxes today. And after that, I will take you through my exciting and scary goals that I have decided to focus on for the next short to medium to long term. TBC, TBC. Oh, and if you notice that the filming is a bit weird or smooth, or not. Or not, we'll see. Uh, that's because Daniel was playing with his new toy. We got a gimbal, so. Right, let's do some yoga. box ourselves in soon enough. All right, so as promised, I will be taking you through my rather terrifying but exciting goals that I have set myself for the future, something that I've wanted to kind of put out there for a while. And I think it's really important to set yourself challenging goals. And it can also be really valuable to put those goals out there. You don't have to scream and shout about it. You can even just write it in a diary or record yourself saying, I'm gonna do this. It takes it then out of just being in your mind and it puts it into reality and there's an expectation there without too much pressure hopefully but you need a little bit of pressure so the big one is the 230 marathon goal ideally this would be sub 230 but i'm going to call it 230 because it sounds nice but really what i mean is two hours 29 minutes and 59 seconds so under that 230 barrier. This is something that I've been thinking about for quite a long time. I obviously ran my first marathon earlier this year. I ran two hours and 34 minutes and 28 seconds, I think. Two hours, 
34 minutes and 28 seconds for my debut marathon this year in February. I feel like I know more having run a marathon now and done a build up and I'd like to be in a better position and reach higher than that. So we're saying 2.30. It terrifies me to say that, which is a good thing. Tick. And where the rest of the goals align, and these are all time goals for different distances, they kind of filter down from what it means to run a 230 marathon and roughly where that means I need to be for other distances. And all of these times are based on me putting the time two hours and 30 minutes into Jack Daniels amazing table. That has no reference to the whiskey, but Jack Daniels is a physiologist and coach. He's coached many Olympic athletes and has created this table based on loads and loads of data that you can put a time into your age and it can create lots of quite informed estimates. So it's useful to kind of work backwards from. So the half marathon time, according to a two hour, 30 minute marathon is one hour, 11 minutes and 57 seconds, which is also quite terrifying, bearing in mind that my current half marathon personal best from last year is one hour 13 minutes and 29 seconds interestingly enough the 10k race prediction according to this data is 32 minutes and 36 seconds which is three seconds slower than my current 10k pb from 2018 which gives me a little bit of confidence that the marathon and the half marathon time are achievable with the right level of fitness and the right training i'm gonna need to set myself a more difficult 10k time because I've already achieved the time that it says on there. So I'm gonna set that at 32 minutes flat. And again, I'd like to go sub. So 31.59 would be amazing. And lastly, the 5k is 15 minutes and 38 seconds. Now that's six seconds faster than my current 5k PB from this track season just gone. But again, I'm gonna whittle that one down a little bit more because when I ran my 5K PB, which is 15.44, I had COVID. I didn't know it yet, but I had COVID. And you can check the video out from that race in the link that is at the top of the screen right now. I just think for that reason that I can achieve a faster time. I was aiming for about 15.30 in that race and I missed it but I'd like to hit 15.30 or sub 15.29 next year at some point. If I don't hit any of those time goals, but I hit the marathon one, I would be proud as punch. This, I guess, is the start of the 2.30 marathon project. It's gonna be the goal that I'm working towards every day, every week, every month until I get there. It might not happen in my next marathon. I'm prepared to keep going for this goal until I can't run anymore. And it feels so weird to be like announcing this goal now and feeling like I need to be confident that I can achieve a 2.30 marathon because right now I don't feel like that. I went for a four mile run walk today, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean that in a few weeks time, I can't be laying the groundwork and putting the work into that goal. What you need to do when you're working towards a really big goal is scale it back. That's the big goal that is scary and is a long way off and where I'm at now is as far away as I could possibly be from it. Well, maybe not as far away, but far enough away. So you've got to go back in stages and in order to do that, it's really useful to set smaller goals along the way. Obviously I've got those shorter distance goals, but you need to take it away from time-based goals and think of some process goals as well. Ultimately, the process of training and working towards that time is the only thing that's going to get me there. I am going to be setting myself goals and a list of expectations almost to refer back to in five really important areas and without working towards each of these five areas and the goals that I will list in them, there is no way I will get to that bigger goal. So it's almost more important to focus on these little things. The bigger goal takes care of itself and you kind of think about it a little bit later on, but it's always there at the back of your mind or you kind of, you touch it every day by doing these things. And those five things for me, for this goal, are sleep, nutrition, mileage, recovery, and mindset. I'll break them down a little bit and explain what I'm aiming to do, what I already do, and what I need to improve on in those five areas. So firstly, sleep. Sleep is something that I have been neglecting. I have not been getting enough sleep. And when I ran my first marathon earlier this year, that was an area of my life that I was absolutely nailing. I was making sure that I got at least 
eight hours sleep every night consistently. You wake up at a good regular time that becomes part of your routine and it just sort of sets the tone for the rest of the day. Nutrition, this is another area that I worked really hard on in my last marathon build up, but I think it's an area that I can still improve on. And I think probably most of us can improve with our nutrition in some way, just by getting to know more about yourself, how your body interacts with different types of foods. I'm not talking about tracking calories, macros, micros. I don't do that. It's a little bit more general and making sure that I'm getting plenty of carbs in before and after really key workouts and hard runs, plenty of protein, making sure I'm refueling within that 20 minute window and making sure that I'm eating all of those colorful, healthy fruits and veggies that stop you from getting ill and hampering your training along the build up. Mileage is an obvious one. Mileage is super important, especially in a marathon build up because the more you run, the fitter you get and I really wanna get my mileage up to at least the place it was in the last marathon build up, but I think I can push those barriers just a little bit further. If you're aiming to increase your mileage, I would definitely recommend doing it very gradually, making sure that it's managed. Typically there's a rule of thumb that it's not more than 10% each week increase on the previous week. In my last marathon build up, I think I hit about 85 miles in my highest week. If I can, it would be nice to get into the 90s, maybe even a 100 mile week at some point in that build up, supplemented with cross training. Recovery is another super important one and I've covered some of this off with sleep, but it's the active recovery and everything else in your life that you kind of forget about. This is just an area that I personally can improve on a lot. Trying to manage stress levels, which is so much easier said than done. Implement a bit of yoga. Things like making sure that you don't plan a really hectic day out the rest of the day after you've just done 20 mile long run and sitting down so that your legs can recover. Foam rolling, stretching, massage, seeing the physio, all things that I let slip to the bottom of my to-do list. And if you make sure that those things are in there routinely, it can work as prevention rather than waiting until you've got a problem and then using those things to sort it out. And the last one is mindset. Without mindset, none of these other things are gonna happen. You have to be motivated, you have to be driven, and you have to be committed to all of those other little goals and showing up every day and implementing them. Not only that, but also in the training and in the race itself, believing in yourself, believing in the training and sticking to that mindset, pushing through the pain is absolutely fundamental to running a seriously quick time or running a personal best. You're never gonna push yourself to be better than you've ever been before without believing that it's possible. I'd love to hear what you guys are aiming for as well. Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you're reaching for and whether you work in a similar way when working backwards towards some scary, big, but exciting goals. And before you go, I need to tell you about New New. New New is a new social media platform that is currently in its beta phase, so it's still being tested out, but there are a few creators on there that are using the platform. And through New New, you guys can interact with my life, my training, and ultimately the decisions I make. So the way that I am using New New is that I will put up a couple of videos each week where I film a question to the audience. People that see the video can choose whether to vote for either of the options on there or to suggest their own option. So for example, I might say, guys, I really don't know what video to film this weekend. Should I film me vlogging my long run or do you wanna see me do a gym workout? For example, you do have to pay to vote on the platform and I am also being paid by New New to use the platform, but all of the money from the votes we are collecting up and we will be donating that money to charity at the end of the campaign. I think it's quite a cool way for you guys to interact with my life, with my training, see what I'm up to and vote if you want to, or just have a look on there to see what I'm doing. I will include the link to my New New platform in the description below. Head over to New New, check out my profile, and if you're interested to vote on something and slightly control my life, then go ahead and do that.